<laughs> you made a really important point for people, and that is that the myrosinase enzyme is heat sensitive. And as you pointed out, most people like to cook their cauliflower and broccoli or sl right. slightly steam it. And uh, their trade off for that is maybe it tastes a little better, but also it inactivates the myrosinase enzyme. Correct. So they're not actually getting as much sulforaphane from the glucoraphanin as they would if they were to just chew on that raw broccoli. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But but what about the the myrosinase enzyme? Is the stability the same throughout all the cruciferous families? So like if you look at the broccoli sprouts mm -hmm. versus the the mature broccoli, or you know is their kale. So myrosinase appears to be about as stable th throughout the family. There are differences, there are subtle differences to the, to the protein composition of myrosinases in different cruciferous vegetables, to be sure. Um, uh, subtle enough so that I, I can't even describe them to you. I mean, they're, they're minor differences, but they, they certainly must um, confer increased or decreased stability or catalytic ability on those, on those molecules. Um, Interestingly, um, if you don't, if you ingest glucoraphanin or glucosinolates without myrosinase at all, um, you then can count on the bacteria in your gut, in your intestines primarily, to do that, to make that conversion. And you know, sometimes scientists think they're so darn smart. Um, we, we, just to back up, back up just a little bit, we observed that when you deliver just glucoraphanin to people, just give them one dose, one reasonable amount, that which they would get in a serving of broccoli, um, and then we collected their urine um, for 24 hours. We asked them to collect their urine for 24 hours. So you get a full 24-hour collection, which pretty much spans the period during which the enzyme myrosinase acts, sulforaphane goes into cells, gets recognized, turns on NRF2, gets spit back out, and then gets excreted in the urine. So by collecting a 24-hour urine, we can pretty much, we can get a very good idea of how much bioavailability there is, how much metabolism and availability. And it turns out that if we looked at 100 different people, and we did, um, after giving them one dose of glucoraphanin, their bioavailability, the amount they gave back to us in their urine, was all over the map. It ranged from very, very little, but always something, to 40 or 50 or even 60 or 70 percent of what we gave them. But the mean was pretty low. It was about 10 percent. So most people converted and metabolized and excreted only about 10 percent of what they were given. So when you give sulforaphane itself, the, the end product, the active ingredient, if you will, um, we get more like 70, 75, 80% bioavailability. Still a bit of variability person to person, um, but since we're up sort of near maximum, it appeared to be not as great, and well, it, it was not as great in terms of a percent of the whole, so um, that's that sounds a little convoluted, but Essentially, most sulforaphane came back at us in the urine and was available. So, in our infinite wisdom, we thought, ah, if we, we co-deliver myrosinase, if we give these people active myrosinase in addition to glucoraphanin, they're all going to give back 70 to 90 percent of the metabolites, um, and we'll get rid of the variability person to person didn't happen that way. Really? Really. Um, it didn't happen that way. What, it, what did happen is that we moved the bar up so that instead of 10% bioavailability or 70%, we had about 35 or 40%. So the average moved up substantially. It was about three times, three or four times more. Um, but there was still quite large person-to-person -person variability. And you know, so we have to sort of step back a little bit and say, yes, this is, this is due to intrinsic myrosinase activity in the gut, because certainly we hadn't done anything to get rid of that. That was still acting on these molecules. Um, but also just innate mammalian genetics, differences between you and me and the way we process these metabolites once, once they're formed, differences in absorption, differences in distribution and metabolism. Um, so there's a lot we still don't know. There's a whole lot we still don't know. 
But, um, but as a result of this sort of cocky thinking that we could, uh, we could abolish this variability and at least have a, uh, a, a very predictable amount delivered to people, um, we did learn that we can greatly increase bioavailability by delivering it with myrosinase. Um, and in fact, uh, um, there are now companies that are selling um, glucoraphanin plus myrosinase. You have to be careful if you buy those supplements because it's not a given that they're, they're going to be as stable as you know multivitamins and things that you can just leave on the shelf for years. And and um, so, so you need to pay attention to the expiration dates on those products that have live active enzyme 